Often the world of science and technology is treated like a completely separate entity from the art, but their intersection can create more rounded and more thorough growth in both fields, for they are two sides of the same coin. Both art and STEM inspire out-of-the-box thinking, in-depth analysis, and expression of our humanity and curiosity. In this episode of Char Hidden Figures, we will learn about an awe-inspiring Latina who embodies the meeting of both worlds in a single woman, Dr. Maria Teresa Ruiz. Maria Teresa Ruiz was born on September 24, 1946, in Santiago de Chile. Her father, who was a critical artist, focused on teaching her art techniques since she was very young. In fact, in an interview, she stated that she had learned to paint and draw before almost anything else. At age four, her father was teaching her point perspectives and vanishing points, as well as the proportions of the human body. So throughout her childhood, on top of the regular science interests most famous scientists have, she spent a lot of her time on the arts. In fact, when she was 14, one of her art pieces won a contest held by a national radio station. So when it came time to decide what major to study in college, she really struggled to choose between art and science until she was given guidance by her artist father. He, at the time, who was making illustrations for the government and various companies upon losing his accounting job. He told her to keep her art for her own pleasure and to do anything else that would make her happy as a career. That's how Dr. Ruiz ended up going to the University of Chile to study chemical engineering. But after a year there, she realized that her true passion was the universe, and she transferred into her university's brand new major, astrophysics. Maria Teresa Ruiz graduated in 1971 and thus officially became the first female astrophysicist of her country. During her time there, she found that although her classmates were all male, she was treated as an equal. Unfortunately, she did not find the same acceptance when she left her country to become the first female doctorate student in the astrophysics department at Princeton. At first, she doubted herself and assumed that the rejection she was facing was because she was less smart or because English was their second language. Until one day, she saw her classmates struggling with a math problem they had begun wrong. She explained how to fix the issue on the board, but turned around to find they were all gone. Surprisingly, she didn't feel hurt or rejected at that moment. She felt happy because she realized that her classmate's problem wasn't with her. It was not because she was less smart or about her accent. Her peers just did not know how to talk about science with a woman. In a later interview, Ruiz stated that that was her classmate's problem, not her, and that she, quote, would have liked to help them but didn't have time since she was trying to finish her doctorate, unquote, and that she did. Dr. Ruiz graduated from Princeton in 1973. Throughout her career, she continued to do art in the form of embroidery, and by 1978, she had finished around a dozen pieces. That year, she was admitted as a visiting researcher at the Godard Institute for Space Studies. But before she left Chile, she showed her collection to the director of the Cultural Institute of Las Condes. He immediately put them up in an exhibition. This was the first and last time her art was ever displayed to the public. After her year in New York, doing research and collecting fabrics from Soho for her art, Dr. Ruiz returned to Chile where she became a professor and continued her research. Although Chile had the largest telescopes, priority of time and projects were given to scientists from first world institutions. So she and a colleague decided to avoid observing the same projects and tried to find their own interesting ones. That is how Dr. Ruiz made her astronomic discovery, the brown dwarf Kelu-1. A brief astronomy lesson for those who are not familiar with this subject. The largest planet in our solar system is Jupiter, which has 317.8 times more mass than planet Earth. A star is a heavy ball of gas that can burn hydrogen. The least massive star requires 75 times the mass of Jupiter to start burning hydrogen. So what goes in that range between a large planet and a small star? A brown dwarf. Because they have less mass than stars, brown dwarfs do not produce light and are thus harder to spot they don't produce light because they do not fuse with regular hydrogen like normal stars, but instead fuse with lithium and or deuterium, which is a hydrogen with an extra neutron. In 1997, Dr. Maria Teresa Ruiz was observing the Hydra constellation, which is located 61 light years away. She noticed a very weak object, which she thought might be a cold and small white dwarf. But upon analyzing its energy distribution, she found that it did not match anything she had analyzed before, even with her many years of experience. After redoing the measurements, the same results appeared. Dr. Ruiz then realized she found what appeared to be the first brown dwarf that was refloating, or alone in space and not a part of the system. She named it Kelu, after the Mapuche word for red, and published her findings. Up until Dr. Ruiz's discovery in 1997, 
Brown dwarfs had only been a hypothesis. As of 2015, more than 2,800 brown dwarfs have been discovered. In recent years, astronomers have discovered that Kalu is actually a family of three brown dwarfs, which have been observed as one due to the older technology. Dr. Ruiz became the first woman in the history of Chile to be awarded with the National Award of Exact Sciences in 1997, and was recently revered with the L'Oreal UNESCO Award for Women in Science in 2017. Dr. Maria Teresa Ruiz still does embroidery to this day and displays her artwork on the walls of her house. She claims that the pieces acquire their own personality and guide her through the process of making them. That science and art are in fact similar because trying to control art, much like trying to make her findings match her hypothesis, only led to frustration. That she truly learned from when the situation did not match her expectations, that she had to search better think more and from other sides until she could truly understand. Thank you for watching this episode of Charged Hidden Figures. Like and subscribe for more content.